Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I wanna show you a cool sound design trick that I use all the time using Auto Sampler to build custom sampler instruments very quickly and relatively easily with minimal programming in sampler. So sometimes what I find myself doing is stacking up multiple software instruments like this. So here I've got the electric piano, I've got the Mellotron, with a choir type patch. Then I've got the ES2, just playing like a monophonic patch. And then when I put all of these together in a summing stack, to do that, you just select all three of the instruments, go up to track, create track stack, and then you're gonna select summing stack. That'll put them in a summing stack so you can actually arm the summing stack and play all three of these at the same time. Now that on its own is not very interesting, but if you start adding some plugins to this, here I'm adding fresh air from Slate, just to give, a, give it a bit of a top end bite. I'm adding crystals from Eventide, just for some cool sort of crystalline delays. And then I have Black Hole also from Eventide for some really big ambient sound design. So now when I start playing notes, it sounds like this. Now, I like the overall tone of that sound, but I can't really play it as a polyphonic like synth pad because the ES2 is a monophonic instrument, and if I changed it to polyphonic, it would change the, change the sound design of that instrument. So I don't want to do that. So instead of loading up three instruments inside of a summing stack and having all of these plugins running in real time, what if I simply just convert this over to a new sampler instrument and have all of the effects that are in this baked into the samples. So that's what I'm gonna show you next. So what you wanna do is add the auto sampler plugin after the final plugin on the summing stack. By the way, this can also be done just on an individual software instrument track. You don't necessarily have to have it in a summing stack. So after my black hole plugin, I'm going to add auto sampler. You can find auto sampler under utility and here it is, Auto Sampler. We'll load it up in stereo. Auto Sampler was a new plugin that was introduced in Logic 10.5. And what this does is it automatically samples notes within a selected note range and also at a regular interval. So by default, you can see this is sampling from C1 up to B5. I'm gonna go ahead and make that go up to C6. And then you can also set how regular you want the sampling interval to be. So right now it's going from C to F sharp to C to F sharp, so it's a tritone, a diminished fifth. I want a few more samples because the more samples you have, the less sample interpolation sampler has to do, meaning the less pitch shifting happens. So you end up with a higher quality or a better quality sounding instrument because there's less pitch shifting going on. So right here it says sample every. I'm gonna drop this down to three semitones. So every three semitones, this is going to take a sample from this summing stack, from all three of these instruments plus the effects in the summing stack. Now, this is not a comprehensive tutorial on auto sampler by any means. I'll do a more comprehensive in-depth tutorial on auto sampler later on in my ultimate guide to Logic Pro series at some point. But there's really just four main important parameters here, the range start and the range end sample every, which is your interval, and then also you have the sustain. This is how long it's going to sample for. Now there's other options in here, like you can add velocity layers if you want, you can add round robins, you can auto loop the samples. I actually find that the auto loop function doesn't work very well, so I'm gonna show you how to manually loop your instrument after you've sampled it. So all you have to do at this point is once you've set up your note range and your interval, make sure that the track is armed or record enabled, because if it's not, it's not gonna pick up any sound from the summing stack. And then you just click sample. And what this is going to do is it's gonna sample each note, each of these blue notes for 10 seconds and convert it into an audio file and automatically map it in a new sampler instrument. So I'm gonna click sample and it's gonna ask you to give this a name. I already came up with a name for this, Crystal Choir. And it's gonna put this in the auto sampled folder. And notice that the file type is an EXS file. Sampler actually still uses the EXS format from the old EXS 24. So all of your old EXS instruments are still compatible with Sampler. 
So then you click start and it's gonna start sampling automatically. This may take several minutes and it'll tell you at the bottom of the auto sampler screen how long it's gonna take. So you can see what's happening is it's sampling for 10 seconds and then it's releasing the note and anything after that 10 second uh, duration, that 10 second sustain is just reverb tail from the effects. So it will automatically stop sampling once the signal uh, drops to, to zero, to nothing. And it says right here about six minutes remaining to sample the rest of the notes. So I'm not going to make you wait six minutes. So I'll let this finish off screen and I'll be right back. But while this is sampling, I do want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. If you're a musician, songwriter, or producer, and you work with collaborators on a regular basis, you've got to check out Boombox.io. Boombox is an incredible new service that allows you to upload your tracks and then invite collaborators to view, download, and leave time-stamped feedback on your tracks. Or if you're a mixing engineer like me, you can give your mix clients viewer access, which means that they can listen to and comment on the files, but they cannot download, edit, or delete the files. Once the client is happy with my mix and they've paid the final balance, I change their access to editor and they now have access to download their track. This is an incredibly helpful safety for me when working with my mixing and production clients. Boombox.io is absolutely free to get started. So sign up for an account today and get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so we're on the very last note here on C6. I'm not gonna play the note because it's uh, ear piercingly high, um, but it's about to wrap up here. And once it's done, there we go. The screen will light back up again. Okay, so that whole instrument has been sampled from C1 to C6. We can now load that instrument up in Sampler. So I'm just gonna mute my summing stack. I'm gonna create a new blank software instrument and I'm just gonna load up Sampler from here. We'll load this up in stereo. And where all of these auto sampled instruments go to is they go up here in the default factory default menu here. You go down to auto sampled and there it is, Crystal Choir. Now on its own, it's gonna sound very similar to, uh, you know, what it sounded like before, just playing one note at a time. But now because it's been converted to a polyphonic sampler instrument, I can play chords now. So I don't have to worry about that ES2 being in mono and then the rest of the instruments being uh, polyphonic. There are a couple things you want to be aware of here though. Um, you, the first thing I like to do is set the uh, amplitude or amplifier envelope here, in particular, the release stage along with the attack stage. So let's hear what this sounds like right now, I'll just play a few chords. Yeah, so it's got a pretty strong attack. The note just comes in directly. So if you wanna soften that up, you can pull back the attack time and this will kind of smooth out that front end. And then if you want the notes to sort of linger for a while after you let go of the keys, you can pull out the release time of it as well. So maybe that's lingering a little too long. So let's pull in the release just a touch. And then the other thing you might wanna do with this is you may want to loop the individual samples. So a couple things to check here. Go up to the mapping tab and then also bring in the zone tab. This will show you all of those sample zones that were sampled by auto sampler. Again, ranging from C1 all the way up to C6. What I like to do is I like to take the lowest sample and I like to pull it all the way down. And the highest sample, I like to pull it all the way up just to make sure that there's no dead keys on the keyboard. And then what I like to do is find one of these notes and loop it. I'll try to get a pretty clean sounding loop and then I'll apply those loop settings to all of the other sample zones. So I'm gonna play A, A3, I think, A2. So here's A2. So 
obviously I don't want to loop this area. That's just sort of like the lingering, you know, reverb tail. Uh, but with this zone selected, I can come down here and I can change the loop mode to forward. And then I can set a loop for that note. And again, you want to look at the volume of the waveform and you want to make sure that there aren't any areas that are like, like really different. Like the area where the loop is, you want the volume at the start and end point of that to be relatively uh, similar because otherwise it's not going to be a clean loop. You won't, uh, you'll notice that there's a loop there. And then what you can also do is you can adjust a loop crossfade right here. You can also just grab it up here and move it around. So as the playback gets into the loop range, it's going to play through the loop range. And then as it gets to this point, it's going to start fading in from this point. So this point and this point are crossfaded as it loops. So let me just hold this note for a while so you can hear that loop. So it's pretty clean. You can hear the volume duck down a little bit, but I'm going to show you a way to fix that in just a bit. So I've got the loop range where I want it. What I'm going to do at this point is go up to the zone view, and this is going to show you a list of all of those zones. So if I go to the keyboard view, each of these zones are just going to be shown in zone view here, just as a list. So the one that's selected is the one that I have down here that I already applied the loop to. And if I scroll over here, you'll see that the loop has been turned on, and you can see there's a loop start, a loop end, and then a crossfade amount. Now these values are shown in samples, not milliseconds. Some of the values in sampler are shown in milliseconds, but these ones are shown in samples. So what I can do at this point is just hit Command A to select all of these, turn the loop on for all of them, and then I'm gonna click on one of these ones that says zero for the start point, and I'm just going to type in this value, 168, 150, 168, 150, and it's going to apply it to all of them. And then the one that has the endpoint we want here is 413, 656. So I'll type that in, 413, 656. It applies it to all of them. And then the crossfade, 59, 323, 59, 323. So now I've applied the exact same crossfade I applied to that one note to all of the other notes. One more thing that's gonna help this loop sound even smoother is if we use an equal power crossfade. So with all of these selected, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on an equal power crossfade. And you can see now we get more of a logarithmic uh, style crossfade that's going to preserve the volume at the loop points. But now what we have is a custom sampler instrument that has every single note on a loop. They're just gonna in loop indefinitely because we've set up a loop on every single one of these notes. So I've created this big sort of synth pad choir type uh, effect. And again, this is a custom instrument that no one else has. And I created it from scratch just using uh, some stock instruments and some third party effects along with auto sampler and sampler. Now, one last thing you wanna do, once you make all these changes, um, you're gonna want to come up here and you're gonna wanna hit save. So that's gonna save all of those changes into the patch. So the next time I load a sampler instrument, like if I just completely get rid of this and reload sampler, I'll be able to load up all of that sample programming I did in that crystal choir patch. So all of that uh, programming will still be there in that patch. And if you want to further modulate the sound of this, you can play with the filters, you can play with the modulation effects, There, you can add LFOs, other envelopes. So there's other things you can do to modulate the sound here in sampler as well. So that's how you can use Auto Sampler to create your own custom sample-based instruments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.